when I decided to become a photographer, I didn't just, I went to school and learned how to, mm -hmm. what to do. And so I enrolled in um, ICP, which is the International Center for Photography in New York. And I um, studied there and I got so passionate about photography. That's hard to make a living mm -hmm. because there's not a lot of, you know, there's not a lot of work in that area, you know, there's not a lot of uh, opportunity. Deborah Somerville was born in New York and raised on the shores of Long Island. She lived and worked in New York City and Paris as a fashion model before becoming a photographer. She attended the prestigious ICP, International Center for Photography, where she developed her craft as a fine art photographer and later honed her skills in the field of journalism and commercial work. She lived in New York, she moved to Connecticut, now she brings her photography business to Palm Beach County, Florida. Deborah has enjoyed a successful career in commercial photography, shooting fashion, product, beauty, as well as architecture and interiors. Now, here's the host of the Entrepreneurial Vibration Show, Sandy B. Terry. We have Deborah Somerville from Deborah Somerville Photography here. Um, and Deborah, you are from New York City, and yes. we are here down in Boca Raton, Florida. So yes. why don't you tell me, before we start talking about your company, why don't you tell me what brought you all the way from New York City down here to Boca Raton, Florida? Well, um, first of all, I was uh, living in New York City and started my photography business there. Then we moved, I got married and we moved out to the suburbs. So actually I moved from Westport, Connecticut to Florida. Okay. And what brought me here was basically my husband because he said, uh, I'm done with the cold, I don't want to be here anymore, so let's let's go somewhere where it's really beautiful and warm and I resisted that for th probably three years uh -huh. because I had already built a business and I was doing very well and I had my clients and I was happy mm -hmm. I was cold yes but I was happy and um, <laughs> and I really didn't want to move to Florida because I looked upon that as the Oh, having to start all over again right because unlike some businesses photography you can't bring your clients with you you have to begin again mm -hmm. so nobody knew me um, I had to basically find a studio uh, find clients start all over from the beginning and it was not something I was looking forward to doing so I kept putting it off but then eventually he said okay I'm leaving right. <laughs> come with me or don't so right. I'm like okay right. so I did so from an entrepreneur point of view, yes. that is actually a very important point, mm -hmm. right? Why? Because you literally started first in a totally different city. And when you started, you established yourself, but then you found yourself that you needed to actually move someplace else. And unlike any other businesses, it's not like you were able to actually move and transport your business or you could work remotely leaving your your customers there and then work for those existing customers from where you were but you actually have to reestablish your business re where you were moving so tell me a little bit more about how that impacted your business how you had to change everything and how you had to reestablish yourself yes well that's a very good question because um, when I moved to South Florida I live in Boca I mean excuse me I live in Delray and when I moved to South Florida, I didn't know who my clients were. And that's a big problem when you have a business, is not <laughs> right. knowing who your client is. And I'm still navigating. It's been two years. I'm still trying to find my clients. I have little bits here and there, but right now it's, a little, it's still a little bit of a struggle. First thing I did was I, I opened a studio. Mm -hmm. So I was able to have a place of business, which is important to me. Not all photographers have that because it's expensive, and, right? You know, so but I was used to working that way. And then, then the next thing is I had to find my crew. You know, my people, people that I could depend on. That my team, like because I hire freelance people, I hire hair and makeup people, I hire uh, assistants, I hire you know people to do post production if I can't handle it all. So I have. I had to find all those people again mm -hmm. <laughs> that I trusted right. and I still haven't really done that so I'm still looking for that but I have certain people and then um, you know just basically figuring out 
it was a good opportunity for me because I look at a pun, you know, sometimes you get stale in one place and you're so, when you don't have to go out and get business, you you get lazy a mm -hmm. little bit. And I never had to pick up the phone. I worked every day pretty much. And my clients really hired me over and over again because I do a lot of website business. I do photos for people's websites and they always need more content, always. Right. So if they like you, they, 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 keep, they keep calling me. Right. So I, I always worked. Here, they don't know me. Right. I have to start again. You know, it's, it's a it, You it's have a to get the call. word out. So, you know, I, I redid my website. I tried to lean it a little bit towards the South, the Floridian lifestyle kind of feel, mm -hmm. and um, as opposed to New York, which is a very different Totally different, different world. target audience, yes. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's now been almost two years, mm -hmm. and I'm just now feeling comfortable, and my business is starting to pick up and become more consistent. So I am going to actually take you back all the way to the <laughs> beginning of your career okay. because I was reading a little bit about you and about your background mm -hmm. and I found it very interesting that actually you used to be in front of the camera yes. as opposed to behind the camera. Yes. You used to model. Mm -hmm. um, so I would, like to, uh, I would like to know about um, what was that point in time when you made the decision of, okay, I'm done, I don't want to model anymore, um, I actually want to start my career as a photographer. When was that point well, in time? Well, you know, for me, um, the, the, the modeling and I then transitioned to acting and did a lot of TV commercials, so I was always in the business. All my friends were either models or actors or designers or always in sort of the fashion world of, uh, in, in a way. So it was very natural for me to pick up a camera and start and I always wanted to. Mm -hmm. And I learned a you lot. You felt that inside of you? Yes. The desire. And I learned a lot from, from being photographed. I learned lighting from being photographed. Mm -hmm. I learned so much and I was very comfortable in that world mm -hmm. for me. So it was very, very natural but um, when I decided to become a photographer I didn't just I went to school and learned how to mm -hmm. what to do and so I enrolled in um, ICP which is the International Center for Photography in New York and I um, studied there and I got so passionate about photography and I wasn't really sure if fashion was really where I wanted to be because I loved I, I did a lot of uh, fine art work and I used to show my work in various you know, galleries and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. And I spent a lot of time totally immersed in the dark room and, and working and producing my own prints. And um, I just loved it so much. Um, but, you know, that's hard to make a living mm -hmm. because there's not a lot of, you know, there's not a lot of work in that area, you know, there's not a lot of uh, opportunity. So my roots were fashion and, you know, I began to just shoot pictures for free of friends that needed pictures for their for their businesses. At the time there was no website. Mm -hmm. So at the time it was all print wow. and people needed uh, print advertising or they needed you know pictures for cards that they would send in the mail. <laughs> right. mail, mail. <laughs> I started building my portfolio and I started getting work and I started um, doing well and you know I just kept going mm -hmm. and anytime I'm <laughs> Anytime anybody said to me, and this is a good thing for young people to hear, or people that are just starting out, anytime somebody said to me, can you do such and such? Can you shoot, for instance, I don't even like sports barely, but I had someone that needed me to shoot for the NBA. Uh -huh. Actually, it was to shoot t-shirts. I had to shoot the, the players' um, photographs so that they could print them on t-shirts. So weird. And cups. Uh -huh. Do you shoot? Do you shoot? You know, sports photography, I'm like, yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. You never said no. Never, never said ever. no. And then I'd go running around asking everybody, how do I do this? <laughs> what kind of equipment do I need? But that's how you learn. Exactly, yes. So, yeah. for me, Very it was good. fantastic because yeah. I can shoot anything. Believe me, I can shoot. I've shot everything. Yeah. Every genre. The sky's the limit. Just go for it. Try, you have try. to. Yeah. You have to. And it's good because you, if you love what you do, it's not so much of a chore. Yeah. You just, photography, shooting a, a basketball player is not that different than shooting a dancer, mm -hmm. which I learned because I love dance, uh -huh. which is not that sh different from shooting a fashion model because it's all about movement. 
it's and I like to make everything look beautiful because that's my background. Right. Like I tend to if you hire you have me, my good eye for that. If you hire me, you know you're gonna look good, <laughs> right, right? Because I have that fashion. Oh, thing I need to call you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a picture. Yeah, yeah, you need to call me because I don't. I love that. I love to make, and I'm very symmetrical. I love to make everything look clean, mm -hmm. beautiful. Nice. Even basketball players. Even bas even t-shirts of the yeah, basketball even players. Even the t-shirts of the basketball players. Wow, so, wow. Yes. Very good. Yeah. So um, tell me, what was the most amazing experience that you had uh, shooting? Like now that you made the transition, you decided, okay, I am not going to be in front of the camera. I'm going to be behind the camera. What was that moment that you said, aha, uh -huh, this is exactly why I knew I needed to make this transition this is my purpose in life. Oh, I don't know about my purpose, but uh -huh. um, I was, you mean when I moved from New York to No, when Florida? you transitioned to do exactly what you wanted mm. to do, that you knew, I I'm doing exactly what I wanted to do. This is my purpose. This I is, just, I'm doing exactly what I wanted to do in life. Um, that's that's that is fulfilling. a big question because, you know, I've done, I've, I've, I've climbed, I feel like I've climbed so many little mountains, mm -hmm. like, and every time I, I think I can't do something every time I feel like maybe I'm over my head maybe I shouldn't have said yes maybe maybe I can't do this I do it and once I do it I'm like I did it uh -huh. and then I'm ready for the next why don't you tell me um, if you could change anything if you could do anything differently mm. um, for the best obviously what would you change I think for me, um, I I tend to uh, not value my uh, my work as much as I should. Mm -hmm. So I tend to always not charge as much as I probably deserve to be paid. Work, do extra. You know, maybe I just feel like I feel like sometimes so a lot of times I work for free, mm -hmm. and then I kick myself saying. What the, was I thinking? Why? And people are always asking, especially photographers, oh, can you just bring your camera? Yeah. What they don't realize is that I can bring my camera and I'm so happy to do it because I'm so passionate about my business. However, I need to be paid. Hmm. Sorry. And I, often I don't. And if I, could, if I could just tell young people, if I could give advice, especially women, is just know your worth, value your worth, because men don't have as much of a problem with this. They're mm, like, right. this is what I charge. Yes. And they're, they're fine with it. And we're like, they don't want to talk about money. They're like, oh, I don't know. It's like, what, what are we, whatever you think you want to pay me is fine. No, right. it's not fine. It's not fine. Know your worth. Know your worth and value your worth. And I, I, at my age, I am still working on that. If this was a room full of entrepreneurs, what would you tell them? Do your best. I would say one thing, always return calls communicate whenever you can and be um, you know be a good person in business because I think a lot of people sort of forget that piece that's because it's human mm -hmm. and we're all human and we all have stuff going on right mm -hmm. it's not always about money or business even though we have to know our worth <laughs> <laughs> that's a video yes, yes it's so true do you yeah. know what I'm saying yes absolutely you know? a lot of people forget that they do, you know? they do. they're in a, such a rush or such a the, uh, they're yeah. always like in some, sometimes they forget about yeah. this yeah yeah and the human side the human side and I think it surprises people um, sometimes when somebody's kind to them yeah you know so yeah, let's say that. Don't forget that piece. <laughs> that old business. <laughs> yes. Thank you so Aww, very much. It was such welcome. a pleasure talking pleasure. to you. I was really looking forward to Yay. it. Yes. Me too. Yes. Me too. So, thank so you. So we had Deborah Somerville here <laughs> with us. And Deborah, how can people find you? Okay, so you can go to my website. It's um, DeborahSomerville.com. That's S-O-M-E-R-V-I-L-L-E. -E. And that's because everybody spells it S-U-M-M. -M. No. <laughs> one O, one M. Um, so yes, go to, please go to my website, um, anytime. Yeah. And thank you very much thank for you. watching us and listening to us. Now we would love to hear from you. Tell us on the comments below. Was this advice helpful to you today? And how can you put some of what you learn into practice right away to start to see a difference in your entrepreneurial journey? Also, don't forget, if you found this podcast helpful, make sure to subscribe. Share with your friends and hit the like button so we know to make more podcasts like this one.